Hello YouTube, welcome back. We're here again at Blade Motorcycles to test this, the Tiger 1200 Rally Explorer. Is this the best adventure bike for 2022? Let's find out. today I've been looking forward to this day for a very long time full disclosure I've actually ridden the GT Pro which is that black one there very nice bike check out that review if you want to see that but quite frankly look at this monster she's a big girl I personally love the looks of it absolutely love the looks of it hands down I, I think it is probably my favorite looking adventure bike this is the rally explorer version so it has a 30 liter fuel tank literally it comes standard with just everything it's got these crash bars as standard a quick shifter up and down heated seats heated grips i think it's got six or seven different rider modes it's really specced out they've got a standard rally pro inside the uh, the showroom here so if you want to check all of the models out they've got it all here come down to Blade Swindon motorcycles and take a look. They've got all the new 1200s. It's it's really cool. Right, let's hop on this girl. <laughs> oh, she's a big girl. That 30 litre fuel tank just protruding out here. It is dominating. And with the engine crash bars, protection bars here, it's a proper piece of kit. So we'll see what it's like to ride. Is it gonna be too intimidating, too heavy to use, impractical? So this really is a brand new motorcycle. George was just telling me in the dealership, few of the guys here have ridden it, but that's pretty much been it. So this is brand spanking top of the range new bike. Oh, so very reminiscent that T-plane triple. Same as in the, the GT models and the 900, obviously 1200 capacity though. Let's go for a bit of a ride. We're just going to go leave the dealership. First initial thoughts, then we'll go on to some quicker roads at a dual carriageway motorway. See what the wind protection's like with this big tank and the screen here. The radar detection system, blind spot. And then we'll do some more twisties, a bit faster riding and get into more depth about the details of the bike. Is this the best adventure bike in the world? It is the top spec, brand new 2022 Triumph Tiger 1200 Rally Explorer. The most expensive, the most best spec Tiger 1200 you can buy today. Retailing at £19,100. In direct competition, let's not beat around the bush, with the BMW GS, Ducati Multistrada V4S, all of the big dogs, all of the big adventure bikes and in that same price range as well. So we should expect a lot from this machine. Okay, God, it's big. It is big. <laughs> it's just a fuel tank. It takes a minute to get used to. Oh yeah, I got the quick shifter working today. And as I previously thought, the quick shifter is silky, silky smooth really nice on these new triples the t-plane engines immediate impressions um suspension soft that is because we've got it dialed in to the softest mode you can adjust absolutely everything about well the damping and preload you can adjust on the suspension to however you like it and i've got it set at the most softest setting for a nice plush sort of wallowy ride it's extremely comfortable nice screen same as on all of the new 1200 range riding position the seat feels extremely comfortable it just oozing comfortableness sorry for the lack of technical term everything feels very quality the seat's very cushy actually that's the main thing that's standing out see that blind spot radar detection works automatically instantly you don't need to turn it on or off it just starts working much the same as on the um, Ducati Multi V4 and the KTM Super Adventure S it's got some bark to it sounds really nice the immediate cockpit 
of riding. I really like it. It sort of oozes quality. These wing mirrors, which you get on the Explorer models, are very nice, very cool looking pieces of kit. The big screen TFT full color is really nice. The switch gear is all premium on Triumph. And this tank looks really nice as well. Oh, that clutch, that clutch is a bit far out though. I, need, I would need to adjust that for my piddly little hands. Oh wow, the quick shifter is really smooth. Even at just low RPMs, it's incredible. So immediately, if I'm comparing this to the GS, which I rode the other day, well, a few weeks back now, this feels smoother. I go so far as to say already that it feels slightly lighter as well. Everything about the bike feels lighter. The quick shifter certainly does. And it is big, she is a big girl, but it's not intimidating. Just gonna pull in and uh, fuel up here, put some fuel in her. I'm not gonna fill it up, sorry Blade, the 30 litres of fuel, big old fuel tank. But yeah, maneuverability wise, I mean, slow maneuvers here. Whoop. Yeah, slow maneuver stable. It's got a great turning circle. Look at that, the turning lock on it, which will be a bonus for off-roading. Sorry for my parking, I'm just gonna have to put it here. That's one downside of a big bike. I can't be bothered to wheel it back to line it up right, you know? So you may want to bear that in mind. Look at it here, parked up in the fuel station. It is a piece of machinery, this. Obviously, but it is, it looks fully kitted out. It is a sight to behold in the flesh. It really is. What a piece of kit. Got everything on it. Big girl, but looks wicked, primed for an adventure. All right, let's hop on. Fueled up. Right, I'll see you on some quicker roads. Coming on to some quicker roads. Oh, <laughs> it's got some poke. Oh golly gosh, onto the dual carriageway. I've got the uh, screen set at its highest position there. I'm 5'9", I am getting some wind to the top of my helmet, but nothing bad, and this is a, a very comfortable place to be. I wouldn't say you're sitting in the bike as much as a G BMW GS, but it's that type of vibe. It's such a big tank, you get a 30 litre tank. It's sort of very much sitting in the bike. Nice, as, as on all big adventure bikes, nice big wide handlebars. And the screen is extremely easy to adjust. It's literally just with two fingers or one finger if you have a very strong finger and you just push it up and down, no pushing forward or back. It's literally just up and down. And it is quite windy today, so I am getting blown around a bit, but that's just the weather conditions. So 72 miles an hour, I've got the cruise control going here. Toggle on your left. This is a very um, comfortable place to be despite that wind. And with the 21 inch front wheel and the slightly soft off damping, it's beautifully smooth over the bumps. It just soaks them up and sort of in a nice characterful way, like wallows you over them in a good way. I've got pretty much zero wind on my shoulders, which is great. What are the vibes like? Really, really minimal. 72 miles an hour, sixth gear. There's pretty much zero through the pegs for me. I'm getting a little bit through the handlebars, but I would, I mean, really nitpicking. I should not see it being a problem. I mean, I think the GS has it as well. All motorbikes get a certain level of vibes. And they're certainly not bad. On some quicker roads, test for its speed. We're just hunting down a brand new BMW Z4. The M40 version. So I put the bike in sport mode and I just missed it. He gunned it off of the lights. Good on him. But this easily, easily caught up. That triple, when, you're, when you bang it, it revs really nicely. It's really nice power delivery and it's fun as well. In sport mode, um, the bike's all stiffened up. So the suspension stiffened up, the throttle response is quicker. It's really pleasurable actually to rev out that engine. I must say, even though it's that 21 inch front wheel, to be honest, I was concerned about, I have a real thing about this. I used to own an Africa Twin and I never got on with the 21 inch front. It just didn't handle well enough for me. It didn't, it, I'm not saying it's a bad bike, but it just gave me, made me nervous in the corners personally. I just couldn't, I never felt comfortable with that front end. So I was nervous about this, but this is 
considerably better than the Africa Twin at handling and the front end gives you much more confidence. Yeah, it's really nice handling. I'm really, really pleased about that because I love the look of these rallies. But you think, I mean, how much time am I going to spend off-road? Not much at all. However, I love the look of them that much that I want one over the GT. But I'm just worried about that 21-inch front front wheel because I made that mistake with the Africa Twin. Come on mate, put your foot down. Let's go. But you really don't have to worry about it on this so far. Not a problem at all. Seriously, it's a little bit nerve-wracking on the first couple corners until you get used to it, but you can actually dig it in. Oh, it's got, got some go. Lovely power delivery. Oh, come on. Slow down, 30. Yeah, that is fun. I'm finding that fun. Oh, that's a really nice power delivery. Really nice engine. And you can lean it in. Just look at these slow bends. It's really nice. What a great package. Why do I always manage to go past an airport on these rides? <laughs> I personally, I think I would opt out of the, the Explorer. Personal opinion, I don't think I'm that worried about i would like the blind spot detection actually i do really like that but the 30 litre tank i just don't i would opt for the rally pro with the smaller fuel tank a little bit lighter a little bit less bulk up here i'm not a big guy so it sort of feels pretty big to me if you're a bit more i don't know thick set shall we say it might feel more natural with a bigger tank up front but it just feels like the bike is um pretty big but it doesn't really affect the handling or anything like that at all i don't I think. So we just had her in sport mode there chasing the beamer and it is mega, mega fun. That T-plane crank makes it so exciting at the top end, but you've also got the low down torque, obviously. And it's quick. The handling, I'm very, very surprised by. It's actually genuinely really fun, actually. Um, really good, good handling. I'm really surprised. But let's um, pop her into, not off-road, not off-road pro, not rider. Let's put her in road and just see what she's like in town. I am five foot nine in height. I haven't nearly dropped it, but I am on my my tippy tiptoes when you stop so if you have a moment if you stop and I don't know you're checking your phone or whatever and you just sort of don't pay attention for a second you could I, I could drop I would probably drop this oh that's pretty if um if I owned it at one point you know if you're on tours you know you're not always paying that much attention it would be very easy to to drop someone of my height and my uh, little chicken legs I wouldn't be able to hold it up <laughs> around town I did they're just so good these big adventure bikes now it, it is a big big bike but it's actually fine, it's got a really good um, turning circle on it, angle of degree turning circle. I mean, it's not going to be a filtering monster, but it's perfectly doable around town. It's, no, it's very unstressful, light clutch, light gear throw, smooth power delivery when you got it in road, and even smoother in rain mode. You do notice the T-plane crank in the triple engine. Some may not like that, but some may see that as a benefit. I haven't quite made my mind up yet. I'm just imagining what it would be like if it had, say, the 1200 out of the RS or the, the Speed Triple RR. That might be quite an interesting prospect, but it would be so much more sports orientated, it would be less adventurous. So, yeah, the, the T plane crank definitely has its benefits with the lower down torque. You hear that? I don't know if you can hear it. It like clatters away in a good, not a bad way, clattery. Like, duk, 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 duk. it's got that, it definitely has reminiscent feelings of a twin engine, which is what people just love so much in adventure bikes these days is that torque. But God, you can, you can, you really can, it's nimble, you know, you can feel it's big and you're high up. There's no getting around that, it's physics, but it's a good handle, it is a nim, it is a, for a big bike, it is a nimble. It's a weapon. It's a beast. Woo! Very.
very nice. Okay, let's go find a, a scenic spot to chat over uh, a little bit more in, in depth about some technical details. Right, hopefully a slightly half realistic scenario. You're on tour in a beautiful country going down a lane and there's a nice little gravel track on the left here. Now full disclaimer, I have seen this track before so it's nothing too bad. I, I'm not taking a Blades brand new bike somewhere where it could get any harm done to it. It's very, very short track. But this, this scenario that could happen, you're riding along, cool track, and you've got this big adventure bike. Why not go down it? So, let's give it a go. Rider mode, I think we'll just put it in off-road. To be honest, this is not necessary. I could do this on a... <laughs> I could probably do that on a... <laughs> on a sports bike. O-A-C-A-B-S disabled. Okay, so I believe we're in off-road mode. Let's just basically give it a little test and then we'll do a film at the end and, and talk over details, but it comes with sort of semi-off-roady tyres, the Rally, the Rally Explorer version as well, so you genuinely can do this. I'm going to avoid the dirt, I don't want to get it dirty, but with the 21 inch front tyre it just soaks up bumps. Also standing up, is really really easy very comfortable i mean it's just like riding on a road really i can't really feel anything there's a few the odd bump if this was my bike you could open it up a bit and uh have a bit of fun <laughs> which is always a benefit of these bikes is this the best adventure bike of 2022 or in the world I think it's seriously, seriously up there. If you take the word adventure, literally, and what these adventure bikes were built for, this has got to be one of the best, if not the, the best, the best, in the Rally Explorer version as well, with the 30 litre tank. You've got loads of fuel range and range to travel on big adventures and big tours wherever you like without worrying about stopping for fuel. Also with the 21 inch front wheel it's really not a problem on the road handling wise. It's not as good as a 19 inch front wheel would be naturally that's physics but it's really good it's not a problem. Like I said you don't have to worry about it. I found the Africa Twin a problem not hating on the Africa Twin but I personally didn't like that handling feeling but this is better than that a lot better it's, it's really really nice. Standard coming with the um the engine bars quick shifter heated seats, heated grips, six or seven riding modes. You've got off-road and off-road pro as well. So if you want to take this anywhere off-road, pretty much it, it's going to go there. It's really, really capable bike off-road. Not that I've proved that in this test, but I've, you know, you've seen the videos of it riding around off-road fast and doing jumps. <laughs> I take other people's word for it. It's really good off-road. It's very good on-road, really good, comfortable, fast and fun, sporty, but also laid back and comfortable for on the road as well. And everything about the bike is premium. I'm not gonna go into too much details. It's got everything that a modern motorcycle, apart from forward facing radar for cruise control, if you're fussed about that, it doesn't have that. Other than that, it's got everything a modern motorcycle needs. A fully adjustable suspension, semi-active suspension front and rear. You've got shower at the front, and I believe it's a shower shock at the rear as well. Brembo Stylema brakes up front, four piston calipers, two piston Brembo brakes on the rear, cornering ABS, traction control, adjustable power modes, blind spot detection. I can't list everything, it's got everything you need. Big touring adventure motorcycle. So this bike guys is specced with the uh, fog lights as well on the engine protection bars there. But what do you think about the looks? I just think it's really, really, really good looking bike. It's much more angular than the, the previous Tiger 1200 and I think personally looks much better, especially in this uh, matte green with the white at the front and the gold forks. It just looks mega cool and ready for an adventure. So I'll just show you the screen adjustment. Really good, same on all of the new 1200 models. It's literally no pulling back or pushing forward or twisting a little dial at the side. It's just push down and push up. And if you push halfway, it stays in place just fine. It doesn't drop down or shake at all. It's a really good screen system. Just briefly, you come onto the dials here. This is like your, your menu toggle button for, for scrolling around in the menu. These are your indicators. Your mode button for changing riding mode. Cruise control set and then adjustable speeds. High and low beam lights, your horn there. Come around to the front. Got heated grips, your fog lights here. Sorry, that's heated seats, in fact. 
fog lights here and your pass light there. On the right here you have your home button so you can change the style of the screen. In fact, if I turn it on. Rawr, tiger. So as I was saying, you've got your home button, press that. And then there's just endless, you can do all sorts on these, just flick around. You've got your general settings, service, any warnings the bike has, coolant levels, damping you can adjust, all sorts, rider aids. And then if you scroll left, you can go down and you can come into your fuel status, navigation, and come down. You can go to Bluetooth, music, phone, navigation, text messages, GoPro connection. It really has got everything you need. Not too much into a uh detailed specs there it just says so much about this bike i i hate getting bogged down in you know, what are the brakes what are the exact suspensions it, it's the overall package of how a motorbike feels and this is oh look there's a heated seats button there a little din 12 volt charger yeah as i was saying it's the overall package of how everything feels you know you need to you need to ride it and feel it you can have the same set of brakes, for example, on a different motorcycle, and they can feel completely different. It all ties in the suspension, the brakes, the feel of the engine, the vibes, the, all the ergonomics of the bike all make a difference. So it's, it's best just to ride it and get a feel for it. But having ridden this today, big old side stand on it, which is good. This is definitely, I mean, yeah, it's a real, real, really good bike. It's great on road. It doesn't really suffer much for having, I keep on going on about it, but for having that front 21 inch wheel, it's great. And then if you want to go off road, you completely can. I personally would go for the, as I've said, the Rally Pro version without the 30 litre tank, but that's personal opinion. The weight of the bike, it's 261 kilograms, not a light bike but it's considerably lighter than the previous Tiger and it is lighter than the GS as well. Once equivalently both fully spec, this comes in at the lighter motorcycle. And I would say this is faster as well. The, the GS has got more torque and you do notice that on the road. But um, yeah, this bike is quicker on the road. I gotta be honest, I just go straight into sport mode now on these bikes when I'm on the road. No point in anything else unless you're just cruising. The sport's where it's at. But yeah, oh, it's tall as well. Just coming out just a little. This must be in the highest seat setting. The seat, uh, seat height goes from 875 millimeters to 895. I think this is in the 895 setting. It feels pretty high to me. Differences for this bike to its competition. Like I was saying, the GS has more torque and it's got that more immediate grunt. It feels like more of a sort of big Bertha of a bike, shall we say. The Super Adventure KTM, I really like that bike. That is a lot more lively than this. Obviously, it's got the 19-inch front as well, so it, it, it handles quicker. And it, yeah, it's more of a, a mental bike, that machine. The Ducati Multistrada V4S is a quality bike real premium the v4 engine is buttery nice it's a real peach of an engine i i would probably prefer that motor the v4 in the multistrada to this triple however the overall package of this tiger if we're talking adventure bikes let's not forget we're talking adventure bikes not sports tourers which is pretty much what these bikes get used for, but this video is adventure bikes. I am, I hope I don't get too much slate for this. I'm gonna say this is currently the best in the world. The Rally Pro version, not the Explorer, because, well, for me, it depends, personal preference. I would go Rally Pro, but some may further explore. I'm gonna say this is the best in the world. I've said it. Red Ang's verdict. <laughs> this is the best. Oh, I've turned the heated seats on by accident. Cool, that's a bit sweaty. Ah, oh, there we go, there we go. Whew, relax. The engine is fun, engaging, but it's also good for just cruising as well. You don't get that as fun apart from the Ducati. None of the other adventure bikes are as fun at the top end. I would even argue this is funner than the Ducati at the top end, actually. It's a blast. I think it's the best looking. 
personal opinion, but I genuinely do think this is the best looking adventure bike. It's got all the power you need, 150 brake horsepower, 130 newton meters of torque. It's quality, everything's quality about the bike. So the downfalls of the GS, the quick shifter is agricultural on that. On this, it's creamy smooth. Another thing that makes this bike one of the, be the best in the world adventure bike is you genuinely can have it with that 21 inch front wheel and it doesn't seem to make much of a difference for road riding it really doesn't it's a, it's a riot and one last thing don't want this to be too long a video but one last thing which is a good a bonus about this bike it's a lot of power 150 brake horsepower and a lot of torque god it's windy it, it's a really good amount of power. It's not too mental. I personally think the KTM, although I love that machine, I, I would really like one. I may regret saying this, but I think that is too rampant, too mental for the road. Some people might not like me saying that, but it just for me, I, I, I can't see how I would keep my license riding that thing. It's so good and so much fun. I think I get in a lot, of, a lot of speeding tickets, whereas this is just a little bit more relaxed, um, but it's still got some funness there. Really enjoy this bike motorcycle, guys. I hope you enjoyed watching the video. If you did, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. If you want to see a review of the Tiger 900 Rally, then I'll chuck the video up now. Take a look at that, because that may be just as good if not on par with the 12 i think it's got it it's got its benefits but take a look at that video if you want to see it anyway catch you in the next video <clears throat> thank you for watching till next time it's been red ang revival have a lovely day ciao bella